So in this lesson, we're going to use our very first node core module, and that's the OS, short for Operating System Module. And we'll use it to find out some more information about the environment that you're using. And whilst we're looking at environment, we'll also take another look at the process object and see some of the other things that you can do with that. And a couple of other extra things that tell us the directory name and the file name of the currently running program. But to get started, we actually need to import that operating system module into one of our files. So let's create a new file and do that now. And I'm just going to call this one system.js, but feel free to call it whatever you like. And to import a module, the standard way to do it is to use the require keyword. So we could write something like this. Where we're creating a variable called OS and actually storing the result of the module inside it. So this will then give us the ability to access any properties or call any functions that are available in the OS module. And if your text editor supports it, just by typing the variable name followed by a dot should give you all of the properties and functions that are available to you. So you can scan through these and have a look at what you can do with the OS module. So to start off, let's find out a bit more about the user that's actually running the Node.js program. And we can do that by calling a function on the OS module, which is simply user info. So if I was to save that script and then run it, you'll see I'll get information about the username and the home directory of the, the person that's running this node script. And there's also some additional information like the user ID and the group ID, which if you're running on a Unix-like system would actually tell you the, the correct group and user ID. But because Windows doesn't have this concept of user IDs and group IDs, so just get minus one. So it's not massively helpful for Windows users. So let's have a look at some of the other functions that you can call on the OS module. There's another function called platform, which if I run the script now, indicates that I'm using a Windows operating system. And obviously you'll see something different if you're running a Mac or a Linux machine. But another useful function you can call is release as well. So if we just run that now, you can see I can get the specific version of Windows that I'm actually running these Node.js programs on. There's also one other fun thing that you can do with the OS module, which is to find out how many CPUs that you're running on your machine. And the CPUs function actually tells you about each CPU that's installed on your machine. And realistically, I've only just got one CPU, but it has multiple cores in here. And it, so it lists it out in this array and gives you some nice information about it. So knowing the number of CPUs available isn't super relevant, especially since JavaScript is single threaded, as in it only really uses one CPU at a time. But you can see that the OS module gives you some interesting information that you can make use of if you're writing a program that requires some knowledge of the operating system and platform that you're using. So the key thing you should take away here is that to import a module, you simply use the require keyword and then reference the name of the module in a string within those require parentheses. Okay, so before we finish up the video, let's look at a couple of practical things that you might need to do with the environment that you're working with. So this isn't actually part of any module. So this isn't part of any module, but there are two variables available, dir name and file name that can tell you about where the Node.js program is running. So here you can see running the system.js program again, we get the directory name and also the file name of the program we just ran. So this is useful when you're working with paths and other files on the system. And we'll look at that in the next lesson where we look at the file system and path module. So one final thing about working with the environment that you're in, sometimes you want to access environment variables that are set up on your computer. And we saw that in a previous video where we looked at the env property of the process object. So here you can see all of the environment variables that are set up on this computer. But what about if we want to actually create our own environment variables that store some sensitive information? So it's common practice to store things like usernames and passwords as environment variables on a computer so that they're not stored within your code base. So we can create a new environment variable simply by saying export and then the variable name. So let's say database password and assign it some value. And this command might differ if you're using different command prompts, but certainly if you're using bash or git bash, this is the way to do it. So now if we were to run our system.js program again, Scrolling through the results of process.env, you can see now we've got a database password stored in there, so we could then extract that and use it within our Node.js programs. 
So that should cover pretty much everything that you need to know about working with your environment and getting information about the system that you're working with. In the next lesson, we're going to look at working with files and the file system module.